Up until this point, I truly thought it was all a conspiracy. Large format film, a negative four inches by five inches. <laughs> Impossible. Even after watching the likes of Brian Burks and Ben Horn, I was not convinced. That is, until Intrepid Camera out of the UK decided to send me one of the 4x5 Mark IV Black Editions. Made primarily from 3D printed parts, this thing is lightweight, portable, and, well, quite frankly, brilliant. I really didn't need to get addicted to another film format. But, here we are. Thanks, Intrepid. Alright ladies and gentlemen, really wasn't planning on getting high during the intro sequence, but uh, I suppose I have had worse things happen to me. Uh, also, if you're wondering why the microphone is still clipped to my hat up here, it's because for whatever reason the audio sounds way shittier whenever it's clipped to my shirt down here. I don't know why, so we're going to roll with the mic clip to the hat strategy. But anyway, thank you for tuning in to today's video shooting large format 4x5 film for the first time ever headed up to central washington a place i'm very familiar with i've shot at plenty of times before and uh, to test drive a large format camera uh, before we dive into the actual shooting and whatnot though i want to kind of run through all of the components that i needed to acquire before actually going out and shooting the 4x5 camera when i received the camera i was a bit intimidated and overwhelmed by what i all needed and what all had to come together in order to actually take a picture so i kind of want to run through all the gear and everything that you'll need if you're interested in taking some large format 4x5 images so first of all, you will of course need the camera itself. And as mentioned, this is the Intrepid 4x5 Mark IV Black Edition, but they do have some other models and other formats available on their website if you wanna go check that out. You'll also need a lens for the system. I picked up a Fujinon 135mm f5.6 in very good condition on eBay for around 250 bucks. For Intrepid cameras, make sure that the lens board is a Linhoff or Technica style lens board. And you can make the distinction by the flat design with sharp edges and notches at the bottom. Shout out to Brian Burks for the disclaimer on that one. You will also need film holders. I picked up a five pack on eBay for around 60 bucks and they were in good enough condition from what I could tell. And yes, I am fully aware that I am burning a sheet of film to smithereens. One of the holders had two sheets already loaded when I received them. So I was able to use them to practice loading before doing it for real with my own film. I would highly, highly, highly recommend practicing this process before loading real film for the first time. So for the film itself, I decided to go with Portra 160 as it's quite a bit cheaper than Portra 400 and I wanted plenty of latitude for my first stab at large format. I suppose you could technically shoot large format without a tripod, but I'd imagine you'd have to be on LSD to try something like that. Speaking of which, when the hell is Kodak gonna come out with acid rolls? I mean, imagine getting to the end of a roll of Portra, licking it, and being absolutely blasted to Pluto. If you're gonna make us lick the damn rolls, Kodak, at least make it fun. Anyway, the tripod that I use is a newer carbon fiber. I can't say I recommend this tripod though, as they updated the design, and it seems as though the head doesn't tighten down as securely as it did on the old model. It's not a huge deal for 4x5 because the system is so light, but I couldn't use my Pentax 6-7 on this setup at all because the head wasn't strong enough. It's always a good idea to have a light meter, but I'm a cheap piece of shit, so I use a $2 app on my phone. However, I would probably, definitely, absolutely encourage you to get a real one. The last essential item to grab is a mechanical shutter release cable, and a cheap one on Amazon will do just fine. Some other items that aren't technically essential but I'd still recommend picking up are a dark cloth and changing bag. I just use a dark towel as a dark cloth and you could always load your film in a pitch black room in your house if you have one. Loading the film for the first time was a nerve wracking experience and took me about 10 times longer than I probably should have, but I eventually finished up, felt relatively confident and was finally ready to go shoot. It only seemed right for my very first 4x5 image to be of the infamous Snoqualmie Pass fan. To no surprise, this thing took one hell of a beating over the winter. I really wouldn't recommend letting 12 feet of snow pile up on top of your vehicle. I can't deny it does add some character though.
Well, let me tell you, it's been a while since I've felt so ignorant when it comes to film photography. I haven't had that kind of nervous excitement, those butterflies in my stomach in a long time, and it is much, much appreciated and much welcomed. Let me tell you, looking through the ground glass of a large format camera puts looking through a waist level viewfinder on a medium format camera to shame. I mean, this I could look at this all day long. Oh my god, this is a nerve-wracking experience. Okay, shutter, cock. There's really nothing special about this picture. I've shot the same composition three times now, and this is probably my least favorite version. I wish I shot it from a lower perspective and a wider aperture to isolate the van from the clutter in the background. However, I am more than stoked to see that I did get an actual image back. I was fully expecting to mess this process up one way or another, so to see anything other than a blank negative was a win in my book. For the next picture, I return to yet another familiar spot, the windmills on Highway 97. I was in search of something simple and warm as my last outing to this location was quite the opposite. However, I quickly learned that large format photography and gale force winds don't tend to mix nicely. I think it's smart to shoot at a relatively fast shutter speed because I don't want the image to have any micro jitter or be blurry because of the wind. All right, since the meter was saying F11 at 1 500th, I'm gonna shoot this at F16 at 1 250th. I'm quite a bit more pleased with this image, although there's nothing about it that really screams 4x5 or large format. When viewing the image online, it might as well have been taken on a medium format camera, but I'm still pleased with my composition and really glad that I got another usable image from my first outing with a 4x5 camera. All right, dark slide back in, black for exposed. And there's two sheets of Portra 160. 4x5 film exposed. <laughs> Ooh, it feels good. All right, well, I popped out to the Cleelum area because it was a bit cloudy over here on the west side of Snoqualmie Pass, and I wanted to get into some sun, but when I went over there, it was just too windy, and it was just the midday light that didn't look that good. So I came back over to the west side of Snoqualmie Pass where there's a little bit more overcast in the sky, a little bit more even light. And I'm only gonna take two more pictures, I think. I'm gonna start out with four pictures total, send those off to the lab and see how I did, see if they turned out and go from there. The first picture that I'm gonna grab, the first of the last two is gonna be of this river and I'm gonna try to stop down the aperture to F maybe even 64, get everything in focus and really get a nice smoothing of the river, uh, some nice motion blur and get kind of a cool, uh, a cool smooth painting-esque type picture. So experiment a little bit and see how this turns out. Good. Well, I already broke uh, part of the camera. I cracked the ground glass, which is sick. Anyway, beautiful composition right behind me, just literally 20, 20 yards up the trail. So uh, I'm gonna shoot this vertical. I'm gonna get 
The, the river goes back quite a ways. You can see quite a, quite a ways back there. So it'll be cool to be able to get a lot of detail out of the four by five negative. But um, yeah, you know, I'd expect, I expect, maybe this is my new, uh, this is my new mirror lockup, you know? I just break the ground glass all the time. So that'd be sick. All right, I'm gonna load up, frame up, load up and take this shot. I think I might actually try to do a little bit of a movement with this one. We'll see how this goes. All right, so essentially what I'm trying to do is make sure everything's level, but still I want uh, the top of the river to basically be in the top of the frame here. So I'm gonna move this front piece all the way down. We should fill the frame up like that. So I have everything leveled, and I was still able to move this center piece down a bit in order to fill the frame, get more of the foreground, and then get the back of the river towards the top of the frame. Get up to F64 here and see what this gives us. So this is a four second exposure. This is probably the most fun picture from the day. I'm also pleased with it because it turned out pretty much exactly how I imagined. There's also a perfect amount of motion blur in the water and the river flows nicely through the whole composition. For the final location and final image, I forgot to turn my microphone on because I am a certified idiot. All you really missed though was me saying the composition was not exactly what I had in mind, but the day was coming to a close and I just wanted to get a picture of Mount Si before leaving North Bend and also I had to wait a while for a cloud to pass so that I could get some nice warm sunlight filling the scene. While I didn't create any work that I'm super proud of, I'm just happy that I got properly exposed images and it's safe to say the large format addiction has begun. All right, everyone, that's gonna wrap up the video. Thank you very much for tuning in. Very excited to have the 4x5 camera to shoot with over the summer. Again, massive shout out and thanks to Intrepid for sending it my way. I've kind of determined that it's not necessarily going to be a tool in my photography kit that I use all that often solely because it would burn an absolutely disgusting hole in my bank account if I did. However, whenever I am out shooting on my medium format camera or just exploring Washington and I come across a scene that I think is worthy of a 4x5 negative, I'll make a note to take a separate trip out to that spot grab the picture with the Intrepid 4x5 and get it developed and scanned at a later point in time. Um, I think that's a good balance with shooting a large format when you're not developing and scanning at home, which I of course should be because I've, I've been saying I'm gonna do it for about two years now. Will the day ever come? I don't know. But um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy out there and I will catch you. Fuck, I just roped myself into making another video next week. What it, or I need to I need to do it anyway, so it's good. I'll I guess I'll catch you guys next week again. All right, peace.